straight on into it. No messing about here in Latam. Already jumping into the bands. We've got Ints, we've got Black Dragons, and we have got a game. Yeah, and it's okay. You haven't missed any of the, the juicy stuff just yet. Just in the operator phase. So far, Hibana, Sledge, and Valkyrie have been banned so far and the last one is going to be da, 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 oh my all right there we go we're up to speed now we're ready to go absolutely rapid fire stuff um i'm gonna have to cough something here geo and i'm not sure what map this there is of course villa i wasn't sure what mansell meant there mansell. over well it's Portuguese. like mansion right mansell? Uh, well, that's what i was thinking i was thinking are we on the right playlist like we're playing house or something like what's going on <laughs> but no we are of course in tuscany we are at villa i think we're going to get the map bands to show you during this as well but we're just going to concentrate on what we have got in front of us for the time being yeah so this is we'll, we'll, we'll do the the brief the, we'll do ace's job while he he got kind of sped along black dragons versus ints this is going to be a really interesting one i think because so far it's both of these teams have the only played team one ints got slapped they lost 2-7 yep. on clubhouse meanwhile black dragons did a cheeky bit of slapping and uh they won two seven two on oregon last week so we have a direct comparison of the performance of these two teams so far in stage one here in br6 so i think that's really interesting and especially as both these teams have some slight yet uh i would say uh substantial changes to their rosters in has switched out Alamal for Hornetown. Now, that might just be like, oh, it's one person. Alamal was their best player last year. So they have got this new guy who was also the best player of Black Dragons last year as well to come in and take on those reins. That's a lot of pressure to have. Meanwhile, on the side of Black Dragons, you have that core of what we knew to be FaZe with Iron, Live, and Yuna. So there you go. You've been up to speed, caught up with everything. And now we get a cheeky game. All within the first action phase and 40 seconds. I do believe he might be coming back to okay. us briefly. <laughs> as, <laughs> that was uh, the game, guys, as by soon the way. As all Thanks the game's for frozen. But this is going to give us an opportunity to do a couple of things. We can further discuss this fixture because, as you said, Gio, yes. I genuinely think that this is a good one. Uh, both these teams have played the exact same amount of rounds. They've both had 7 twos, but they've been at either end of that 7 2 scale. Um, so I think that there's certainly some sort of fighting for top dog in between, you know, where these two teams are going to sit. We're already back inside of this one. We are indeed. It's all good. We're back. And we haven't missed anything huge. So they are here on AVG. If you can't see the bomb chassis through the walls. And Vince is going to be getting a nice kill onto live. That's the Malusi gone. But back onto VNX. It's just concentrates backwards and forwards so far as the teams continue to get aggressive. Look, these teams really firing on all cylinders. And, well, just as it seems one gets an advantage, it gets snatched straight back. Hugzord comes in. Black Dragons finding a nice kill there, leveling things up. On attack, he decides to join in on the action as well. He's at the top of these E stairs, two versus two, gets rid of the Goyo shield, already starting to burn through those toxic babe canisters. Bugzord is going to want to try and hold on to those for as long as possible. There's an eternity of time remaining and some vital info has just been found out on the drone and the Iana clone there. As Duds is going to look to try and pressure and push. No this hard breach potential, and I believe, sorry, Jill, that the uh, vault is in fact fully reinforced. That's why we're seeing the rotation now from Hugzord trying to move the player out of vault. Yeah, I, I was going to say the same thing, as they have the 90 control, but nothing really to do with it. And notice as well, the only projectiles that these two players have are the nades on Yana. So to open up those um, Aruni gates as well, you would really have to waste that kind of utility. You can see one of the nades has actually just been used to open up the one into study. So a lot of that needs to be used for, for kind of uses that you wouldn't necessarily want. And that puts them in a very difficult position. Fewer than 20 seconds remaining, and Hornetown's going to get rid of Yuna, which leaves just Hogsword on his own here on the defense. Takes a ton of damage, and he's caught out. And Ince takes the round number one. Ince coming in with a very strong attacking start here on Villa. 
Not a map that it uh, is necessarily easy to come by your attacking rounds on, but from the sort of fragmented sections that we got to see of that round, you could certainly see how they made that happen. A lot of information coming on the drone and some really good teamwork in that final two versus two as well. Now we're going to be going to what I believe is trophy and statuary. I'm going to assume that that's, that's what those mean. And um, we will be able to see this from the beginning. No rushing through, no interruptions. We're having a six pick over onto the Kaid. So I'd imagine that they will be looking to el fully electrify off um, the statuary wall. Now, if I remember correctly, uh, actually I can check my notes. Thatcher has not been banned. However, the attacking team aren't going to be bringing him along anyway. So they'll have to remove those uh, electric claws a different way, either from underneath, uh, or most likely from underneath, if they are to get rid of them. We can touch on the operator bands for a moment as they are, uh, you know, quite... Not, not, not unusual, but they're maybe a little bit different. We've actually seen a sledge ban, which isn't something that we get to see all the time. That was from Int. Uh, they also banned out the Valkyrie. Makes a lot of sense. A lot of intel available. Black Dragons, a little bit more familiar and predictable. They went for the, the Barnet and the Whamai. But the one that I'm really interested there is that sledge ban. Just such a crucial pivotal operator, especially here on Villa. So much potential for this soft destruction. And already you can see that it's forcing Hornetau over onto the book. It's also why, or most likely why we're actually seeing uh, Yana be brought is because she's carrying the frag grenades that uh, you don't have because of the sledge being banned. Now, of course, you could choose to bring a Maverick as well, I suppose, but here on Villa, you're more likely to want to use a Harbreacher who has that ranged capability, and that's why the Ace is more preferable to a Maverick in that instance. So that does mean that one more operator slot has been taken up by the Yana because you want to have access to the nades. You also have the extra um, intel from the Geminis as well. So it's absolutely not like she uh, she doesn't have her uses. And, and Villa is one of those maps that we would see her get used a decent amount in EU last year. Um, it just means that things like, for example, a Thatcher, despite not being banned, not going to be brought along. Dudes is looking to push his way on through. He's out of bathroom currently, going for the slow peek, and fortunately for him, it doesn't work out. Ion comes off the better in that engagement. Rapid fire of the P10 Roni is exactly what you want in those close range situations. Still a threat down on this floor, and of course, a really. Oh, what about that nice. timing? That's a beautiful kill there coming on in. Really, really unexpected stuff there. And poor old Vitz, just wrong place, wrong time. Ion's going to go huge, but can he hit his shots? Draws for the pistol and instead chooses to lie and wait. But Onatal says, no, thank you. I've seen what you've done to my other two teammates. I don't want any part of that. I'm going to try and get myself out elsewhere and be useful for the remainder of my team. My assumptions was Vitz actually knew that that was happening due to a flank drone. So the fact that that other player nearly got caught out is a real big surprise. Now we're in the final minute. VNX is going to be getting the next kill. That's onto Hugsword. So evened out at a three versus three. And Yuna's here ready for anyone who may be coming in through bathroom. And it looks like there is one player to be doing that. But it'll be Hornetown getting the next kill. Yuna will have seen the barrel of that gun most likely. And yes, finally does get the kill. Confirms that. Looking for anyone who might be coming in from classical hall so far can't see anyone moving into stat that's where this next fight is most likely to be taking place the pings come out from the cameras available yuna just pushing on forward and that finally takes the round for black dragons with a 2k at the end ints not winning out that attack kills just lining up there for yuna in the dying few seconds and Ints just looking a little bit spread thin on that attacking phase. They didn't really have any uh, any sort of strong foothold. I do believe we're going to jump to the map veto while we're in this pick phase, just so that we can see what resulted in us ending up here on Villa. It was, of course, there we see down to Consular or Villa in the end of things. Ints there choosing to remove the Consular. Cafe and Coastline as well, so Ints really not wanting to play on any sort of aggressive map, and Black Dragons seeming as though they were, you know, pretty uh, pretty happy to play on either an aggressive map or here on Villa. Oh, well, there you go. And, of course, moving straight back <clears throat> into 
the game. So we've returned to AVG, which if you remember back to round one, despite the fact that we saw a couple of interruptions for that round, uh, Ince did take it. They successfully attacked onto AVG. It was quite an aggressive attempt as well. And, and we were left with our Buck and our Yana at the very end to try and make things work um, for themselves with uh, limited utility, but it still worked out for them. I would be interested to see, I mean, judging by these two teams' play styles and what I've seen so far, I, I'm not sure this is going to happen, but I would be interested to see if there is a slightly slower or more methodical approach that isn't going to leave the attacking team in a position where they are waning on utility and they're waning on players as well because despite the fact that they finally won it out at the end, it really was just because one person got the right kill. It doesn't look like they're wasting any time in jumping in through the north side of the map and they're going to be coming in for a different kind of take to what they did before. Last time there was a lot of attention paid down to the south side and study. We had a gridlock in play for the attackers who placed the trap stingers all across the top towards main stairs as well. This time things are very different. Malusi being spotted out in bathroom but it'll be live who gets that first kill. A good start for Black Dragons. Warner Tower are going to fall, and that's a lot of your soft reach capabilities, and of course, a lot of things to try and burn a Rooney Gates with. Those stun grenades are going to be very valuable in terms of disrupting that Rooney Gate, and of course, with that gone, it just gives you a few less options. Live's looking to play really aggressive here as players on both sides are challenging onto that window, and maybe, maybe just a little bit too aggressive from these attackers as they're not quite in a position to be able to do that at this point. We've not got a man count advantage. And everything seems to be working against them. Another beautiful go, peek there. We're going to see yet another kill pop on through. Bits, he will fall. And Live really is just on a bit of a tear. He's likely going to get droned here. He's at least already been found out on the Iana clone. He's still got quite a lot of time here to burn. I mean, Halfway point in the round. And doesn't seem as though Ints have got a plan to get through him. It's pretty disgusting that Live was allowed to be a solo roamer up at the north side where the entire attacking team were coming in through and he's traversed all the way back to Classical Hall and holding 90 control without even taking a, a, a I think, what is that, a pixel of damage I see? I would need to get a magnifying glass to even be able to see that and it looks like it's going to continue. Gets the Yana Gemini, but he's not moving back. Duds takes a little bit of damage. And just so much time has been wasted for Ints, who are failing to push any further forward than they currently are. But Toxie also holding onto the red stairs too, means that crossfire is very much in place. And we're getting to that final 30 seconds of the round. Finally, Patoxy is cleared out and Drunk's moving forward and Ints can begin to push. 25 seconds isn't a lot of time at all and already a Rooney Gates is starting to happen to be burnt as was going to be a big factor in these few stay seconds. Unit, yeah, I see some of his Vulcan shields destroyed as well, but there's always Toxic Babe canisters to rely on. Don't think that that one hit, or if it did, I thought I'd had a little bit of trouble with it, but it's going to matter not as well that the attackers are falling like flies. Dunks, he's got himself down. Hugzord laid prone with the shotgun, but misses his shots. That's unforgivable stuff. It matters not as the six man steps in. Black Dragons win the round out on time. I think that Hugsord is maybe going to be uh, checking to see if he was firing blanks there. Yeah, I was so hoping for a juicy 2k just because I thought it would be a really good BM, but unfortunately you couldn't even hit the first one. I, I think so much of the success of that round really is owed to live, though. We can't deny how much value he brought simply by wasting a ton of time. I mean, look, this is him again on the replay. He knew that there was that player there on the head's window, easily got rid of them. It was only once that crossfire that was preventing Ince from pushing forward into Classical, having that top red control. Once that was removed, that was it for, for when they finally got the opportunity to push. But my God, it took them a long time to cross that, cross that threshold. And again, it just comes down to bad pressure from other areas of the map. I think, you know, you think, how could you deal with live on 90? What could be something that you could do? try and root him out of there well take east stairs control now that happened but it happened very late yeah you could also look to try and play somebody on 90 window now that didn't happen at all 
Uh, 90 window is often quite a popular spot because you can affect onto vault from there, you can affect onto the door that goes into games room. All this is at the top of the screen, top sort of middle right of the screen, just where Vitz's drone is at the moment. That's the area that we're talking about. And there was no pressure in that side from any of the players of Ints, so it just gave live. It was a no-brainer for him just to sit there and play. Yeah, it was it was really uh, really something, and something that I think Ints will bear in mind going forward that they need to be more assertive about. And it's not that they haven't been assertive or haven't been aggressive, but it's about how you approach that. Um, and, and as you mentioned, the fact that they were just too late with a lot of the decision making. But maybe that will change this time round. Black Dragons have gone downstairs into the kitchen. And that means, of course, that Ints are going to be looking for this top stairs control uh, or top floor control. Sorry, um, just using their drones right now to try and get some intel about what's going on below them, as well as setting up the flank drones too. <laughs> it looks like drones just can't decide. They know there's a mute jammer nearby. And there you go. There's, I believe that was the M Malusi as well, but this time being played by Iron instead of Live. Yeah. Just engagement we go to Lion as well as he finds the oh, second, man. taking the player off Repel. Drones at his feet, but it doesn't matter. He hasn't got a great deal of health, but his job has well and truly been accomplished as he looks to continue and pressure onto this master bedroom. He's got holes above if he wants to try an impact trick, which he will, and just continue to hold this top floor. Absolute one-man army. He's got a bit of pressure coming in from below as well, but a nade will eventually see him out of action. Vertical angles now still being held by the defenders. It's not unusual to see this, as obviously we all know vertical angles work both ways, and those shotguns can do quite a number at tearing through the floor and dealing some good chip damage or even a down onto your opponent. Such relative safety as well for the remaining members of Black Dragons. I mean, you still have Live playing off-site. He's around the living room area, which means that if anyone comes down Red Stairs or Astro Stairs, he'll be very quick to punish that. And and it really depends on whether Ints have droned him out. And he should have some impunity from that because of his pests. And you can see Black Dragons are feeling the pressure from above as that floor does continue to be opened. But as we head further into the 45-second mark, the point still stands. The Black Dragons are pretty safe, although as I say that, Vitz decides to get his revenge on Hugsword. And that is one kill, and now a man even count. Toxus has made a quite an interesting rotation and got himself onto that top floor. Yuna, he's going to cover the jump in as well. And, ooh, could he see himself gain a kill? He goes for the swing, gets confused with the clone. You could hear the clone going off in the distance. I think it was a good heads up play from Yuna. Is he anticipating the player pro? Draws for the SMG 11. Yes! The spray is going to net him the second one. But gun skill got him the first. But Toxy comes in with the final kill. And Black Dragons, they're going to take round number four. Oh, that was just disgusting from Yuna at the end there. Doing everything that was failed to do in the last round. Was it Hugzord who couldn't get his shots on the on the shotgun on AVG? Yeah. Making up for that straight away. And I think one of the really cool things as well is we've seen really good stuff from Live, Iron, and Yuna. That is that core that was formerly on FaZe Clan that I think there was some doubt surrounding because when you thought of FaZe Clan before, those three were not necessarily the ones who really stood out to you as the, the highest performers or the most special. And, and I suppose there would be some people who would argue, yeah, that's why they're not on FaZe Clan anymore. But they're actually really showing up. They're doing work for Black Dragons. And, and I think that we're seeing a lot of that. Maybe they were underestimated. Kills certainly seem to be flowing on the side of Black Dragons. Uh, Ion, particularly, live, wasting just so much time. Uh, and Yuna as well getting himself up there. Quite a nice... It's, it's a spread starting to develop there in terms of the kills on that side. We've really only got Hornetal leading in the kill department. Everyone else sitting at two or three if you look toward the side of Ints. So there's certainly something to be said for the gunfights that Black Dragons are winning. I think that Ints are maybe just struggling to get a couple of the trades off. I know a few of the rounds that we've seen where Ion has maybe gone quite big. They're rounds where we've not seen trades coming in quite as quickly as you would like. But there is still time for that. This is, of course, Villa. Defensive rounds can be easily had here. And I think particularly with the way that we've seen the bands come out, that sledge ban, I still think it's really hurting Ints because... Of course, you've already mentioned that they're struggling to find the nades to bring in the Yana as well. And 
you've got to ask yourself, are you bringing the Iana and the book just to compensate for the lack of the sledge? And if that's the case, what else could they be bringing as another string to their bow? Mm. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And and the sledge was, of course, one of Black Dragon's bands. Oh, oh actually, no, it wasn't, according to the... Uh... According to the UI, look it over, I was wrong. So actually, they've kind of hurt themselves in that sense. And what that leads you to, to wonder, maybe, is when the side switches, how much is it going to hurt Black Dragons in return? It's still a few more rounds before we actually figure that out for ourselves, as we are currently on round number five, with Black Dragons leading by two. Yuna just looking down below, knowing that there is threat there. He was playing the Kaid last time we came to this site. He sees one of his enemies, but... Instead, he just backs off, wanting to hold control of Astro, which is where he was before. Zord looking to play on these Astro stairs as well. Ions was quite a problem last time. He did see him get that nice kill and then drop the hatch and find himself a second. I'd like to see what Int's doing in terms of drone work because he do seem to be getting the drones out there, we can see. Mm -hmm. A lot of them are being used, but where are they and where is this sort of consistent hunt for the roamers that are, that are playing underneath because often we're seeing kills just come as players being picked off repels and i'm sure if hugzord had a c4 in his hand he'd be looking to try and see for that window because he knows that somebody is going to be playing on there there's a drone in the window it's just sitting on the windowsill it's just chilling so immediately, that's uh, that's info. Players moving into the bathroom as well. Hogsaw can start to feel the pressure, but it'll be Duds who actually gets c Ford himself. Yuna throwing that as he uh, still playing over towards that side of the map, and it's just Live who's holding on to Statue. Hogsaw's still playing and waiting patiently, and the drone that was in the windowsill now no longer there. Just moved or died. Also could start using his utility now to cut off this push that's coming in through bathroom area. He's got the shotgun as well as Drunksy finds himself down and out. Toxis picking up that kill. Hugzord in such a great position here to continually challenge and dip back as the kills continue to come on in here. These Black Dragons. Hornetile's going to trade it back, but it's really likely to be impactless now as Vitz is going to be the last person standing. Can he find these two there? He's got one going for the second on the Astro stairs, but the information exchange on the side of Black Dragons is as good as ever. Live did a heck of a lot of work in that round inside a statuary and eventually stretched his legs into master bedroom to find that final kill. I find it very interesting that it seemed like, especially when the breach was made, Live was in quite a vulnerable vulnerable position and yet it didn't seem to be too pressured or threatened so at, at all points he never seemed to be overly concerned about the position he was holding and i think that it's really important that ints as the attackers need to be applying that and that is something that we've seen as a general trend across quite a few rounds now is the players that are absolutely paramount on the defending side to be pressured and to be made uncomfortable and to be forced out of positions are not being so. It seems Ints jump in and they try and take angles or routes or shots that are almost convenient or present to them or just there and they can and they go in through bathroom and they push forward that way even though it might not be the most ideal way. They're not being as methodical about where that pressure could be applied. Finally seeing a Thatcher being brought into the mix. Could do something to assist Ints as they certainly need something. They're struggling at the moment and so far we've seen a very defender-sided evening of games here tonight. Which is... Uh, a little bit disconcerting because you do expect, you know, attacking rounds to be able to be won, but in so far in this game at least, really struggling to make that happen. They had a really good round in round number one, and it was such a nice clutch two versus two that you would have thought that that momentum would have carried them through a couple more rounds at the least, but so far after that first round, it's just been the Black Dragon show, and it seems as though nothing they can do is wrong opening kills and you know a lot of time waste as well which has been all really going in the black dragon's favor and i agree gio i think that ints have looked as though they've potentially not got a plan in some of the rounds this time however they will see first blood and then maybe even a shot at second as they're continuing to pressure onto the player that's behind the astro desk well i think a rotation 
is being made now down the Astro stairs, but not before live. Just tosses out a C4 for good luck. Well, that's those nades gone. I actually don't know how many VNX had used at that point, or if he used any, because he's been keeping them until quite late in the round so far. I was going to say I'm actually very curious to see how the lack of the Ash is going to affect them this time, because lacking the, uh, the breach rounds that she has as her utility could be detrimental now obviously ash does bring the the breach the secondary breaches and and so does thatcher and i don't know if this has brought the secondary breaches on thatcher i'm going to assume so so oh ouch okay drugs taken straight down that's your hard breacher as well and the guy who was carrying the diffuser once again a really difficult position iron gets caught out in the crossfire as he missed the second player of ints who was there now a three versus two just two drones on side very questionable swings in that fight in that last 30 seconds or so <laughs> that we have just watched but here we are three versus two hug zord playing very tight toward this vault door obviously the aruni gate is there for hornet out to try and burn his way on through burns it now he'll have to burn it again at around the 20 second mark hug zord looking to toss some looks at babe canisters out i think that one maybe got shot mid-air as doesn't seem to be doing it any good for him. More stuns coming on through. Someone shoot the Goyo shield, please. Hornetau, he found the kill over onto Yuna. You know, live looking for the swing now as well and will get the trade. Toxic Babe Canister will be detonated and so has the Goyo shield. Bits got a lot of work to do. Live isn't sitting on all too much health. Hogsword, however, is full. Still 20 seconds left remaining and time for Vitz to make this happen. He does have the diffuser going for the slow peak. They never work. Hogsword comes in with the final kill for Black Dragons netting. Their sixth and final defensive round as a win. That round really took me back to one of the things that we spoke about in the previous game between Furia and MIBR. And that is what happens when you go for a one-dimensional push, especially on a site where you would expect to see something else. And the problem that we saw at that time is that you're pushing through the north side. You're going to have to face all these fights and the swings in the middle of the map towards Red Stairs. And then suddenly the, the defending team can use study as an extension of their own defense to prevent you from pushing into the site. That is exactly what we saw there. Live using the uh, reinforced wall and the soft wall in study, almost as a mirror window, which he could use to uh, support Hogsword on all of those players who were just funneling themselves into Aviator through that door. You had no pressure from attackers on the south side, no study control, which meant that there was just a lot of room and a lot of angles that were available to the defenders that otherwise wouldn't have been. Well, 5 one Gio, where have we seen this before? Oh, yeah, don't remind me. We saw this scoreline in our first game of the night, but our Black Dragons are going to be able to book the trend. Are they going to be able to pick up rounds here on the attack? It's something that Ince certainly struggled at. Ints now get to breathe maybe a sigh of relief if you do favour an old defence a little bit. They're taking us straight upstairs to aviate a game room. Quite a similar lineup really being brought from Black Dragons as to what Ints was bringing and Ints similar again, but minus the Aruni. I'm not sure how I feel about that. I think the Aruni did a lot for Black Dragons. Aruni is incredibly powerful on, on this site, especially. Um... You know, I was looking at the, the game that TSM played against Beast Coast, and one of the reasons that Beast Coast defense was so strong on this site was because of the control of study that they could hold with the Aruni gates. You have them on the, the study, the top the top red and the aviator doors, and you're doing great, Patoxy. This is a very messy fight. He finally clears it up, but at what cost? He's got about 20 HP left, and you're playing entry, my dude. You need to be staying alive for a while. And yeah, I, yeah. He got three ash charges in pocket as well, and the breaching rounds too. It's fine, Gio. He got himself a kill in the early round. He's going to get picked up here, and he's, I'm sure he'll be there in the dying fuse stages. Finally gets himself revived. Some good teamwork coming out on side of Black Dragons to get him up there. And not only that, but net another kill in the meantime. Duds, he was the one to fall on the Malusi. We're going to see some double-edged pushing here because so far it isn't something we've seen a lot this evening. A lot of focus has been on this vault doorway. 
And I just worry, I think, with the, with the amount of soft destruction that Black Dragons have got and the amount of time they've got available to themselves, they'd be silly to not go downstairs. It looks as though at least some players are making that rotation. Mm. If they're going to go downstairs and start opening up the floor, that remains to be seen. Or are they going to try and get control of Study Balcony? Either is a win in my books. Well, it looks like this is the first time that we're seeing the 90 window trying to be taken control of as player from Ince, who I... I think was Vitz who was holding on to 90 did begin to retreat somewhat and there's the rotation over to study Hugsword using the Gemini just to try and scope out the site and see what's what see what's going on in goes the nade in goes the smoke but straight away Drunks gets Hugsword with a headshot removes him off the board the Black Dragons still do have control in terms of man count and they have an okay amount of time on the board too Fitz finds a nice kill there over onto Patoxy, leveling things out here. And now as Ions looks to push through, earns a bit of time, but a Toxic Babe Canister will give him a lungful. Two more kills coming in here for Black Dragons. Leave it now all down to Vitz. He hasn't really got much utility to work with the SMG-11. Never great in a one versus three. Finds one, draws for the shotgun. Still very doable for him. He got a glimpse of a player there, but gets caught once again as the push comes through, as it should, from Black Dragons. One on either side of that vault doorway, netting them another round and putting them onto that match point. There were some parts of that that did look a bit messy from Black Dragons, their first entry a bit, and I think it was naive of them or or just an oversight from them to not go to try and clear main stairs before they made the attempt to jump into study. I know they used the smoke to try and conceal the... Uh, the doorway and and give and uh, not give that away but at the end of the day when you're an experienced player like these guys are and you're sitting on main stairs you still know the angle you have to hold through that door to get onto study windows so it wasn't too difficult for drunks to be able to punish that decision making that said as you mentioned, it was really good of them to come and approach Fault from two different angles. You can just do that pinch, take advantage of anyone who is in there, and it didn't take long for them to clean up that final player. And as you say, now we are on match point, and this is a really, really disappointing scoreline to be nearly ending the game on for Ince especially. You do not want to be in a position where you're losing 7-1, especially when last week you lost 7-2. These are not redeeming score lines. You need to be kicking it up. Yeah, I mean, potentially three rounds in two weeks or, or two, oh, sorry, sorry, three play days for Ince. It starts to look a little bit ropey. You know, it's one round of play day. You need to be up in those numbers. They well and truly are rookie numbers. But Black Dragons have just looked a little bit better here tonight. And that attack, we've not seen a lot of attack from Black Dragons. But what we have seen has answered a lot of the questions and a lot of the frustrations that we've had when we've been discussing the Ince attacks. And that is splitting off at the halfway point or at some point within the round once you've established pressure somewhere letting somebody stay there and then pinching from the other side and that's exactly what we saw there and it worked just so well there's a reason that we've been asking for it and it's because it does work quite well uh, and black dragons they did that and it, it just shows they won that attacking round uh so we'll have to see how they get on here in the show they're not going to be feeling too good about themselves but they give themselves the best start possible taking down Patoxis, removing the ash at least they've got the man count advantage for the meantime yeah, this is actually a really interesting setup as well because the site itself is trophy statuary, but they've extended so far down and are holding this kind of similarly to how you might if it were an AVG hold. Drunks once again present on the main stairs and you've got duds in uh, Aviator itself. And the fact that they got that opening kill onto the entry and Vitz adding onto it as well. I mean, that was Yuna holding the diffuser too, I think. Ion has picked it up, but already Black Dragons have suffered a casualty at the early stages of this round. Some of the tightness of these kills and the angles that they're going down on is, is jaw-dropping to get to see. But... Ints, they are still in some sort of driver's seat. They have a man count advantage. And honestly, they're looking like they could come away with this round. We've lost some key pieces of the puzzle on the side of Black Dragons. We've lost the ace, which is, of course, the sole hard breacher for this site. And I'll tell you what, if people keep peeking onto that window, people are going to continue to die. Eye on the next in a long line of people that has fallen. 
Well, Hugzord, he has got a lot of work to do. He's the last alive on the roof, and he says, you know what? Everyone else died to this window. I might just die to this window as well. He's going to hold it for a little bit longer, finds one, but drunks with the swing. The shotgun is always going to win at that sort of a range, and ints respond. I just wanted to yell, stop peeking the MP5, dude. <laughs> Like, come on. It really was the round of the SMG-11 and the MP5. It really got most of those kills. And then the shotgun, just the, the sprinkles on the end there. Um, not the cleanest round for Black Dragons. And at the very least, Ints maybe have got a foothold in. It's just about whether they have the tenacity to continue their journey upwards and forwards in the rest of this game. At the very least, they will be matching the score that they achieved in the last play day or, or last week. I don't remember if it was play day one or two, um, but that's not gonna be good enough for them. They do wanna keep pushing forward. They do wanna be going for that overtime win. And if they are to win, it will have to be in overtime as well. I think it looked like Black Dragons were not necessarily prepared to be going for that kind of a defensive uh, set up, which is kind of strange to say because they clearly knew that they wanted to push in and clear from the south side and they will have droned out the side as well. They knew what the setup was. They just didn't look too coordinated in their attempts to take it on. I'm, I'm Part of me really thinks, Geo, that Black Dragons were just like, ah, oh, you know what, this, this isn't really going to work for us. Let's just try and make something happen here. Yeah. And as soon as they lose a couple of people, it's like, ah, you know what, we've got such an advantage in this game. You know, even if we lose this round, we've still got four rounds in hand ahead. Mm -hmm. We can we can probably afford to, to, to drop a round here. Um, and maybe, maybe, just maybe that's what happened. Maybe they got outsmarted a little bit on whatever their plan was. But I really don't think the Black Dragons are going to be all too worried. Their attack on Aviator Games was very good. Uh, and I'm sure that we're going to see similar once again. This time, they're going to start in the study, which is unusual. All the attacks that we've seen so far have started more up towards the north side and that master bedroom side. But a lot of attention at the moment being focused on the study side. Yeah, look at this, droning out main stairs. You know what that gives me? It gives me optimism that they're gonna actually clear it before trying to jump into study. And I think that would be very nice to see because that was a problem for them last time. But do remember, uh, of course, that Black Dragons won round seven, which was an attack onto this site. But this looks like a much more coordinated push in terms of clearing utility from that south side, rather than trying to make that push in from the north. They know that the shield is present here on the stairs. That's why the nade is being thrown in so that should be removed now and that's where drunks likes to play lifeline just one more uh, concussive but ion's gonna be taken out hornetown getting that first kill the diffuser has been dropped but that shouldn't be too much of a problem to pick back up and there's plenty of time horrible bullet hole there really wasn't it from hornetown as he was able to grab a nice kill on somebody swinging and I think that Black Dragons are discovering that these vertical angles do indeed work in both directions. There's so many powerful angles you can gain inside of that bar area that can give you really good key visuals down onto that bottom floor. But they're going to say we don't care nice. about that because we're just going to push up the stairs instead. What about that for a collapse from Black Dragons? They have surely put themselves in the driver's seat of this round. And of course, the map. You can see on the player cams, Vince, he looks pretty, pretty nervous. He's in a one versus four. It's going to be a tough one for him to pull himself out of. Already taking just a ton of damage as the Black Dragons players swarm onto the bomb site. The plant almost certainly going to get put down very shortly, but it's not even going to come to that. But Toxis finishes things. Three kills on the round, and the round and the game secured for Black Dragons. Really a beautiful game there for Black Dragons, who just showed dominance throughout the entire thing. And heartbreaking for Ince, who now have to deal with the fact and, and reconcile the fact that they have had two crushing losses in a row. Not even close games, I think. And despite a couple of rounds where they did okay in this game, there was nothing really stand out to say, yeah, this is a team that belongs at the top of the 